Welcome to Beats and Brews. I'm your host Greg, and this is the only channel where we talk about the finest of hip hop and the finest of craft beer. Or wait, I force you guys to listen to my beats and I drink beer while I make these videos. This video is about GPUs. This is the video I assume most people, since they've been watching me, have wanted me to make this video covering all the GPU grade options. To make this a little more sane, we're going to only talk about the 2008 through 2012 Mac Pro upgrade options. Although if you stick around for the 2006 and 2007, most of what I say will apply. So without further ado, I'll drop some beats and we'll get into this. You are now rocking to DMUG, the Definitive Mac Upgrade Guide series. This is the GPU episode and I hope you and yours are watching from the future, but right now, GPUs are really expensive. <laughs> yeah, that's putting it lightly. This puts a dampener on today's topic, but rather than dwell on it, let's just jump into a quick hardware overview. In front of me, I have the 2008 3,1 Mac Pro. This is a very similar layout to the more modern classic Mac Pros, the 4,1 and the 5,1. As you can see, it has four PCIe slots, three of which in this computer are filled. This is a GPU and this is a GPU. The reason why I have two GPUs is that this GPU does not provide a boot screen. We'll talk about EFI GPU boot screen compatibility and ways to work around it on the Mac Pros. Then we'll also be discussing about where to properly place your graphics cards because this is a 16X slot, this is a 16X slot, this is a 4X slot, and the one above is a 4X slot. That means that you will not get the maximum bandwidth for your GPU if you use the top two. Next, we're also going to talk about the power situation because that's a topic in itself. You have two power leads on your Mac Pro's motherboard that are capable of providing about 130 watts per cable, which is enough for most GPUs, but not all GPUs. So we'll discuss strategies for those GPUs that require more. Also, as you can see, this is a not a AMD GPU. There's a whole thing with NVIDIA versus Apple and basically only very old GPUs will work in Mac Pros with modern Mac OS. That is to say they have metal compatibility, which is the latest, greatest API for Mac OS and the only thing that's supported in Mac OS Mojave 10.14 or above. Now, this is where I wish I actually had a 4,1 or 5,1 still at my disposal, but I sold them. This is my original 3.1 and it does not have one of the features, the four comma ones and five comma ones. And that is a little bar that is a recess bar that the GPUs hook onto. You have to hit a little button to release and push back inside the computer to push the bar back so you can unseat the GPUs. There's nothing that special about it and you can see demos of people doing it online or instructions, but it's just important to call out if it's your first time in one of these computers because it's unlike any other computer I've seen in that regard. Just a forewarning, this is going to be a bit of a dry episode. A long time ago, I wrote a guide on how to install a G4 700 series in your Mac Pro. This surprised a lot of people as they didn't realize you could buy aftermarket GPUs meant for PC computers and stick them in your Mac Pro. The problem is this doesn't apply to every GPU and I'm going to explain in the next few sections why that is and which ones you can and which ones you can't use in your classic Mac Pro. Let's start with a really brief history. Back when Mac OS X was originally conceived, its default graphics API was OpenGL. Over time, the shortcomings of OpenGL became apparent as other graphics APIs, most notably Microsoft's DirectX, surpassed it in a number of ways. Back in the 2010s, Apple read the writing on the wall and developed its own graphics API for iOS known as Metal. 
This happened back in 2014 before Vulkan, the OpenGL successor, was released. Metal would be ported to macOS El Captain in 2015, but wasn't made the default graphics API until Mojave. And Apple, as a benefit, got to do its favorite activity, which is remove support for something. Many graphics cards that were supported in High Sierra were no longer supported in Mojave as they did not receive drivers for Metal. Also important to understand is that Apple bundles graphics card drivers with the OS and they are not backwards compatible. So to translate that, if you got a Radeon 5700 XT, it requires macOS 10.15.2 Catalina or anything above that. For example, you cannot use this GPU in High Sierra or Mojave. By now, if you're wondering how do you know which GPUs are supported under macOS, don't ask Apple. I've actually created a guide. It's probably the most comprehensive out there of metal compatible GPUs. You can find this on the definitive Mac upgrade guide, and I will have this linked in the description below. Now it's time to muddy things up and talk about NVIDIA. At one point in time, Apple used both AMD and NVIDIA for its graphics cards and graphics chipsets. Then Apple and NVIDIA had a falling out that was epic. For years, NVIDIA produced drivers known as web drivers that you could download and install into Mac OS to allow you to use modern NVIDIA GPUs in your Mac. This is pretty familiar to anyone who's used Windows. Then out of left field, Apple decided that it was time to kill this by revoking NVIDIA's developer license so it could no longer sign its code to make it executable under Mac OS. So at the end of Mac OS High Sierra was the last time that you could run modern NVIDIA GPUs. The last GPUs that Apple used from NVIDIA were based off the Kepler chipset, thus those are supported under Metal. The outcome is that only very old NVIDIA GPUs can be used under modern Mac OS. I still might make a video about this topic because it's interesting, although I don't have any insider info. Now to make this more confusing, we're going to talk about boot screens. When you turn on your computer, your Mac has stored in its firmware graphics card drivers. These are really basic drivers. The Mac Pros use EFI, short for Extensible Firmware Interface. This is a specification designed by Intel to replace BIOS as the method to interface between the operating system and the platform firmware. It is important to understand that this is not the same as UEFI, which would come out later and be adopted by the industry as a whole, including Apple. Apple's early EFI use, Universal Graphics Adapter Protocol to communicate with the GPU. UEFI replaced UGA with Graphics Output Protocol. Thus, most PC graphics cards never supported UGA. <laughs> so what the hell does that even mean? Well, it means you don't get a boot screen when you turn on your Mac. Not until the OS has loaded the proper drivers will you see anything coming out of your Mac. That means any aftermarket upgrades you do will not have a boot screen. <laughs> there is an asterisk here, and very few, and I stress this, very few graphics cards had Mac versions that had a firmware that had EFI drivers on them for UGA. That means you can download these firmwares and put them on your PC graphics card to turn them essentially into a Mac boot screen compatible GPU. Then there's also Mac Vid Cards, which is some guy out of his garage who developed his own custom ROM sets and will flash your graphics cards if they're compatible for a very high price. And you can look at that on your own time. There is some great news, though. There is a way to get the boot screens using software hacks. There's the OpenCore Bootloader, which will load the appropriate graphics card drivers so you can get a boot screen with your PC GPU. Since this channel isn't about open core, I'm going to recommend you check out my man Jorg's videos on this, and also I'll link some other sources if you're interested in using open core. There's more features to it than just what I mentioned. Now there's one more thing to cover, and that is power requirements with the GPUs, which I briefly mentioned before. 
On most PC computers, you plug your GPU directly into the power supply. The Mac Pro is different because there are pass-through power cables on the motherboard to make this a little cleaner of a setup. And it is an elegant solution. It uses a very non-standard mini PCIe power cable 6-pin. That means you need to buy special power cables that connect your GPU to the power supply. In the description of this video, I have some links to these. I don't give any money, so I don't really care if you use these links or not. Now, the Elegant Solution does have another major drawback, and is that it wasn't designed for the modern GPUs that are super beefy and draw a lot of power. If a GPU draws too much power on the Mac Pro, it'll trigger an immediate shutdown to protect the computer. This is not because the Mac Pro's power supply cannot provide enough power for these GPUs. In fact, it's only because they use higher gauge wiring to these connectors, and thus this is to protect the Mac Pro from frying these. Clever hardware hackers discovered that they could route the power directly to the GPU bypassing these leads. This is known as the Pixelless mod, and it is the most popular way to power super high-powered GPUs. There aren't that many GPUs that require this, to name a few. It's the Vega 64, the Radeon 7, and the 5700 XT. Again, to go back to the Definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide, I have charted which GPUs require the Pixelless mod in order to use. Performing the Pixelless mod seems scary, but it's not that bad. I did it, I'm not super electrically inclined, and I managed to pull it off quite easily. That is because I followed Jay, aka House of Moths, Pixelless mod guide. He has a video and he has a written form of it. It's excellent and they're linked in the description of this video. So now it's time to do a recap because there's a lot of information I just threw at you. 1. Your GPU needs to support metal if you want to run the latest Mac OS. Most NVIDIA GPUs are not supported by Mac OS. 2. Aftermarket GPUs do not support the boot screen but you can get around this using OpenCore. 3. Some GPUs require additional power to power them properly. 4. Graphics card updates are distributed through OS updates. You cannot use newer GPUs in older OSs as there is no way to install the drivers. 5. Use the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide to help you identify what GPU you can use in your Mac Pro. There is a lot of information there, and I suggest you read it. I understand GPUs are confusing. If you have in-depth questions, I highly recommend reaching out to one of the communities. There's the Reddit group, there's Mac Rumors forums, and there's the groups on Facebook. All of these are fairly active, and people can give you pretty solid advice. If you do reach out to me, I may or may not reply, so try those groups, please. Now comes the bad news part that I've already made a video about and I'll have linked. As of recording this video, even running hacks like OpenCore, you cannot reliably run the latest Mac OS, Big Sur, or Monterey reliably without encountering a bug eventually that will corrupt your hard drive. You can boot Mac OS Big Sur 11.2, but not above that. The problem is, the latest AMD GPUs were not supported until Big Sur 11.4. You cannot use the Radeon 6800, 6800 XT or 6900 XT, which are all supported under the latest Mac OSs. So, what GPU should you buy? Well, that's a question between you and your wallet, and GPU prices are always fluctuating. The best supported GPU for the classic Mac Pros is the Radeon 7. It absolutely rocks at compute, and it's also one of the fastest for 3D performance. It is also supported under Mac OS Mojave, which was the last officially supported OS for the classic Mac Pros, and it can run 32-bit applications, which is important for some legacy software users. The bad news is, thanks to the pandemic, it is really goddamn expensive. I mean, seriously expensive. It was never cheap to begin with. The second best graphics card is a toss-up between the Vega 64 and the 5700 XT. The Vega 64 is better for things like editing because of its higher compute power. 
The 5700 XT is faster at gaming type activities. The third best is probably the overall most attractive, as you don't need to pixelless mod your computer to use it. It is the Vega 56, but if you do pixelless mod your computer, you can overclock the GPU using the Vega 64 firmware and get pretty close to Vega 64 performance. I made a video about it, no one watched it, but you can check it out below. If you're not running Mac OS, the world's your oyster is you can run NVIDIA GPUs and the latest AMD GPUs. The caveats are the power situation still applies and you can't use the 3000 series NVIDIA GPUs as the Mac will refuse to boot. I have seen some users who use GeForce RTX 2080s in Windows and have a separate GPU for Mac OS. The Mac Pro 2008s have the caveat of having an older CPU that doesn't support later instruction sets that are required by the AMD drivers. The community has created a solution that emulates these instruction sets so you can then use the latest AMD GPUs. This video is already quite long, so you'll have to read about that in the definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide. Hopefully you found this video useful because it took me a while to create. And it is time for the outro. Hey, thanks for watching. <laughs>